at Mixed Up Craft. Thanks for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really nice um, hexagon uh, box. It's really straightforward, it's just lots of scoring, so um, that's the, I'd say, the most complicated part of this box. So it looks brilliant and um, just need to tie it a little bit tighter there. Um, and it's really, really roomy. It's a really nice size. It measures, so point to point, five and a half. Yeah. And from the flat to the flat, it's four and three quarters. So it's a really nice um, width. And then you just basically undo this one here. Like so. And I keep doing my knots too much. There we go. And then just basically just pull up any one really if you do it from that. <laughs> oh, why is it not working so well? Ah, oh, there we go. I think it's just a little bit caught. Um, there we go. It opens up to reveal a really large inside. So it's a it's a really lovely box. I was so pleased with this one. Um, I've just finished it off with this. Um, it's not really. Yeah, I guess it's Baker's twine. It's a little bit more tough. There you go. I've tied it tight now. You can see it. It closes really nicely. And then I've just got this little tag here. Open me. Um, I've used the cupcakes, Stampin' Up cupcakes, and carousel stamp set. Um, DSP, sorry. And this card is from the works. And um, it was just a colour paper stack A4 for a pound, I think. And it's a really, really good card. It's about 250 GSM, so it's a nice weight. And um, it's worked well with this one. So, like I said, this is the Carousel and Cupcakes. And I just used the reverse, I think, of one of the pattern ones. I think I used it. That must have been all of it gone. I don't think what one that's come. Oh, was that it there? Ah, oh, there you go. It's this one right at the front. Um, yes, it's this starburst kind of effect at the front, or like the tent inside of a tent. I've just used the polka dot on the back there. The little sentiment that I've used, the Open Me, is from the Stamping Up Window Shopping a stamp set. Uh, but you could just put your own letters together if you've got the single letters. Um, or anything you want on there. You could have Happy Birthday. Um, it's entirely up to you. Now... I think just because of the colours I've used, this would be lovely for like a baby shower. Um, and I'm actually, the one I'm going to be showing you next is in a baby pink colour. So they kind of do look a bit baby shower style, but or for a baby's birthday, first birthday. It'd be lovely with a big number one there in the middle. Um, and also, you know, obviously whatever colours you're using will completely change it to, to suit anything. But the ones I'm particularly doing today do look a little bit baby showerish. So, um, but I love these. I think they're just really, really nice, solid gift boxes. That's the bottom there, which again, straightforward. You could put a large circle die over the top again if you wanted to just kind of not show that. I did stick that last piece down wrong, but I'll do it right in the video with you guys so that you've just got even, um, even folds on the bottom there. So, but there you go. So it's a really nice box. So let's crack on and make this one. So you're going to need, let's grab all the card and everything first of all. I'm just going to grab my scoreboard as well. Okay, so you're going to need a piece of standard A4 cardstock. So my particular piece here measures at 11 and 5 eighths of an inch by eight and a quarter. So that's this piece here. So eight and a quarter by 11 and 5 eighths of an inch, just under 11 and three quarters. And then you need another piece of cardstock here that measures six inches by eight and a quarter. Okay, then you need six pieces of DSP. So this is again all from the uh, carousels, cupcakes and carousels stamping up set. Um, and these measure two and a half by two and a half. And they're going to sit along in all of these squares. And then that's just my little sentiment there, which I cut with two of my um, circle framelit um, dies and then just stamped the little open me there on the top and then I've just got a piece of baker's twine in this pinky colour with like a gold fleck running through it um, or it's like a metal wire whatever anyway there we go so pop all of those bits together and just start off first with your large piece of 
a four card. Now, video I put up previously um, is this exact same process here that I'm going to do first. Basically, to make this box, you are just adding by adding this separate, this extra piece of card on, creates a whole different box. So it was kind of an accident. I actually kind of came across doing this because I was playing around with all different pieces of card and stuff. So anyway, if you have seen that video, great. If not, I'll share the link on the end of this video so you can see that one as well. So with the 11 and 5 eighths of um, an inch side um, along the top, you're going to be scoring at two and three quarters, five and a half, eight and a quarter and 11. And then pop it on its eight and a quarter side and you're going to score again at two and three quarters and at five and a half. Then rotate it back again onto its 11 and 5 eight side and you're just going to put a notch with your score tool on one and three eighths of an inch, four and one eighth of an inch, six and seven eighths of an inch and nine and five eighths of an inch. Okay, so that's all you need to do with that piece. Then grab your six by eight and a quarter piece of cardstock, and you are again going to score along the six inch side first at two and three quarters and at five and a half. Should be left with a tab. And then rotate it onto the eight and a quarter side and score again at two and three quarters and at five and a half. Then rotate it back again onto the six inch side. And you're going to um, you're going to notch it again at one and three eighths, and at four and one eighth. Okay, so that is all of the scoring done. Just leave your scoreboard and grab yourself a ruler. And basically, we're going to be connecting that notch, that little dot, to each of the corners to form these triangles, uh, score lines, which you can just make out there. So. Popping your score tool on that notch that you created first and then put your ruler next to it. You then want to line it up to that bottom end of that score line and that bottom left of that top square and just score down. Make sure you're doing it on a soft surface. I've got a paper stack here um, or a wooden desk. You don't want to um, do it on like directly onto this glass that I've got. Um, you just wouldn't get a nice deep score line. So just score it a few times there and you've got to make sure you get it bang on corner um, to that corner because if you're out then the box won't close properly. And then again from that top notch down to that bottom right hand corner of that square and then you will form that triangle. And you just want to repeat that all the way along those um, four squares at the top. So again that notch that I put in earlier I'm just going to then line that up to that bottom corner like so and again repeat that all the way along okay now I've already done those other two there now with this end one what you want to do is grab that other piece of card that you've already scored and put your notch notches in and just line it up over the top so pretending that you've stuck that down and with that one, again, so when you've got to these two, you've done all those triangles, put your notch on that one and do exactly the same. But just really push down a little bit more at that bottom left-hand side so it goes through that card and just slightly leaves a marking on this one and then just go over that one again because we're not cutting out this top piece of the tab, which usually you do when you're making boxes. We're cutting out the bottom piece. You usually cut the bottom and the top, but we're leaving these two in. So you just want to make sure... That one goes through. And again, with that card, go to the other end. So with that tab, put it underneath, like so. And again, just go over what you've done earlier, but just concentrating a little bit more on that bottom part of that score line. Again, just enough so you get a marking, and then you can go over that tab just on that little bit there. Okay. So that is basically what you want to have at this point. Right, so now we just need to burnish all of the sides. So
And then with the score lines, those triangle ones that you've scored earlier, basically what you want to do, so this first end one here, you just want to fold down and just grab your burnishing tool there and just do that end. And then with these ones here, so fold it in, kind of fold it in half so it joins that one like so. So I've basically folded it down inside so you're bringing corner that triangle and triangle. And you see my triangles completely line up when they're lie down flush. Just burnish that. If you don't have that, you need to go back and redo those score lines so they're spot on because this will affect the, the closure of the box um, if you don't have it like so. And again, so this next one, just fold it down and then bring that one up. And again, burnish it all. And this one. So, just get that one down, do it that way, and just where that little kind of one is on that tab, you can just pinch that with your fingers, just so it gets in a, a score line in it, and that's what you want. So all of these kind of pieces here, the triangle should be facing the top so all those bits kind of fold in on each other like so so that's like almost three quarters of it done okay so grab your other piece and just do the same again oh actually I haven't burnished the whole thing have I so you need to do all of that So now we just want to pop on our DSP, so it's easier to do it all when it's all flat. And basically, I mean, mine's, they're up, so they're both upside down, so it doesn't really matter which way they go. But you're going to put them in the middle of these squares all the way along, because that's the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick all of these down. Okay, so you should all now be at this point. I'm just going to get rid of all this tape everywhere. So now we just need to stick our, join these two pieces together. So I'm just going to grab some of my tape. And what you want to do, actually, I think it'd be easier first of all. So I'm trying to remember what I did first. So yeah, if we cut some, um, so grab your biggest piece of card and from the bottom of the tab, just cut up that first score line and just cut that tab out like so and then just cut up each of these score lines to that first score line like so and then again cut up this one on the second piece and cut that end tab out so. so go back to this and just apply some tape or some tacky glue whatever is works best for you just going to pop another piece on there as well just so it's Super sticky. And 
Yep. And then you just want to line these up. So if you line up your middle, your score line here on your middle square first, and get that all lined up with that score line on the edge. If you're happy that that's in place, and then just carry on up to the top, like so. Okay. And then again, you want to apply some tape on this end tab. Like so. And what you will have, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six of these. So turn it over. And what you can do is fold it completely in half. And then just fold that tab in on the end. And working from the bottom, just line it up and it will stick down perfectly. Like so. Okay, so now you'll have this kind of rectangle shape, um, hexagon shape. Now what you want to do, because it's all even numbers, so I'm just going to kind of fan those ones out for the minute. And what you want to do is very slightly, is get your kind of, you can see the shape there coming together. So all I'm going to do is you're going to work with all the opposites of each other and stick them all down first. So on this one facing me, I'm just going to apply some tacky glue. If I can get it out. Just on the edge there. And then lining them up, keeping that shape. So you, you just want them... So however they naturally fall down, that's where you want them to stick. And then you just want to hold in that glue. Like so. Once it's all done, we can turn upside down and apply more pressure. So now again, with these two here that are opposite, you want to line them up and stick those two down together. So again, I'm just going to apply some tacky glue here and stick them down. Just hold them in place. And in a minute, I'm going to put glue underneath this piece just to um, make sure it sticks to that other one that we've done. This just keeps it nice and neat. And making sure that you're getting that perfect. By lining these up, you know that you're getting a perfect shape. So making sure that these are flush on each side. I'm trying to make sure the glue's stuck. And then again, this end one then, you stick down and you can line it up again. So before we stick that top one down, just squeeze some glue underneath on each side. Because in a minute, when we push it down, that will, we'll push it on that in a minute, so don't worry too much. You just want to pop the last bit of glue here. Like so again, just line them up. Like so. And then I'm just going to squidge a bit underneath this one. Like so, and again on this side. And then what you can do, flip it over. Make sure I've got none there, it's going to st stick on my paper. And then grab your ruler and just put lots of pressure now, and that will all stick down. And you can see how big this box is, you can get so much in this. Such a nice size. Okay, so you can see there now it's all started to stick down. Like so. There we go. If you want to go and squeeze some more glue under this, you can. But like I said, if you do want to just put a larger disc on top, you can. But if you're going to put something very heavy in this, then I would say maybe put a circle disc inside here and also on inside here on the back as well. Um, just to kind of reinforce it, give it a bit more strength. Um, but that's what you need to do. So now we just need to finish it off with our um, ribbon. So when you go, so basically if you now push in all of those triangles, 
like so. That is what you will have. Move my finger. So this is what I was saying, if your score lines aren't perfect and you haven't burnished it, this is when you would notice it. You can see there that that's all perfect. So now all we need to do is add our hole punch. So our, our holes with our hole punch. So this is the stamping up one. This is a nice small one. You can get bigger ones, but you want a smaller one for this. If you haven't, and you've got a larger one like this one I've got here, then, so basically I'm going to, where every triangle is, about half an inch down, just up to that score line, I'm going to pop a hole. So you can see that it's more inside, but it's just along that score line. And that's about half an inch down. And you're going to do that on every side of every triangle. Now, if you've got a bigger punch, what I would recommend is you go down a little bit further because you don't want to weaken this top area here. I wouldn't go down really far, but maybe just a, another like one eighth of an inch or something. Just you'll be able to kind of gauge if it's going to be strong enough or not. Because you, when you tighten it and bring it all in together, it might put a bit of pressure on. And then again, on this other side, like so. And you're just going to do that on every side of the triangle. like so. so that's what you want to have and just grab the ribbon whatever it is you're going to be using so I've got this baker's twine and you are now so again just decide on what's the front or the back I mean there's two kind of where you've attached those pieces of paper that other piece of paper is there so I'm going to say that this is the front and just get one end of this first and so, yeah, so if I say this is the front, this is the back. So basically, you want to thread it from one side. Just grab that. Let's just cut this off. It's not going to work if I don't have it all. And cut this piece. Of You've got two pieces either side, and then you just want to go under and over through each one. So under that one, and then back out. Basically, it's a bit like one of those drawstring handbags, and that's what you want to have at the front there. So this is when you want to put your tag on. So I've just got mine here that I'd already made, and I've already just hole punched at the front there, so that can just sit there. And then, carefully, helping it along the way, just draw it all in together, like so. Actually, I'm not going to put that on. I put it on. I do the knot first. Like so. And then I'll put the tag on. There we go. Oh. There we go. And then just tie it all in a knot. Finish it with another little nice bow. I think this is probably more fiddier, fiddlier than the whole flaming box. Right, there we go. And I'm going to pop some glue on the end of those so you can see that gold's kind of unraveled. Just so it doesn't fray, but there you go. Play around with it until you've got it exactly how you want, but that is it. A lovely, 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 lovely box. I think these are great. Really nice and big. Like I said, these particular ones look like they're kind of ready for a baby shower. Um, I just need to pull that a little bit tighter. Um, but whatever print you use and whatever colours, obviously, to suit your themes, and it will look great. So, again, I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like button if you did, and please subscribe to my channel to see more of my ideas and designs. Thanks for watching. Bye.